<clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Can you see me? We've got microphones and all this stuff in the way, which is an awesome problem to have, baby. We got, I'm going to have to stand on a platform up here so, <laughs> so y'all can see me. Hey, welcome to Life Church. I'm Pastor Bobby. I will, I'm so glad that you guys are here today. Hey, for those of you who are joining us online, we want to welcome you and say, hey, thanks for, for tuning into this. Today's message, we think it's going to be important and it's going to be a blessing to you. So thank you so much for for joining us online. Hey, one of the things that God really impressed on my heart this week was this whole topic of invite. Everybody say invite. <clears throat> invite, invite, invite. So what we want to do today is talk about <clears throat> some tools that will help us as, as God begins to bring people into Life Church. Here's some of the things that he's doing. A, he's establishing his vision for reaching the people that are hurting, the reaching the people that are, that are lost, the reaching the people that have been rejected. That's a big piece of what God wants to create. It's a place of refuge where people can come and people can experience God in a greater way. So a couple things that we want to put in your hands today as you leave. We've done, a, um, we've done an awesome like invite card like this where we sent out 20,000 cards to Saline County and a little bit of surrounding counties uh, last, uh, last year when we first launched the church. Well, God said, hey, I want you to go resurrect that. I want you to put it in something like that's on a card size that people can take with them and they can invite their friends, they can invite their family, they can invite their co-workers, they can just uh, place these cards in places of business. They can think about and pray about the top five people that they want to invite to church and you'll give, them the, you'll give them the tools to help them do that. And the next thing that we've done is we created this awesome, awesome postcard. Anybody recognize that face? $22.12 to the person that can recognize them. Who knows that person? <laughs> Who said it? Erica Coleman. So Erica Coleman's friendly face is on this card. And we want to use these cards, postcards, to say, hey, listen, we're thinking of you doing church service. We'd like to invite you to be a part of what we're doing at Life Church. And I'd love to see you this coming Sunday. I'd love to have you come to church with me. I'll, I'll save a seat for you. So that's what we want to do. And as we do that, God is going to respond to our request. He's going to respond to that and cause us to... Uh, to people that's to flood in, and, and the word that's been given to us is explosive growth. So that's what that's what we want to see. Hey, let us stand to our feet. We're gonna go and go go ahead and go to God in prayer. I want you to go shake somebody's hand, hug their neck, and welcome to Life Church. So Father, we bless you. Thank you so much for what you're doing here at Life Church. Thank you for the awesome, awesome experience. Uh, that we're going to have today in you. And we thank you, God, that you're drawing us to, into a deeper relationship with you today. As we discover the third aspect of the person of the Holy Spirit, charisma, like a grace gift, an ability to that's been imparted to us to, to do something that's not like it's a hard job for us to do. And we just want you to help us understand what that grace gift is for us. So we ask in Jesus' name that you please bless us, cause our hearts to be attentive and to be receptive to what you have for us today. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen. Hey, go hug somebody's neck. High five and welcome to Life Church. Thank you, Lord. We're gathered together once again in his house to give him glory, to give him mm -hmm. honor, to give him praise. Anybody want to praise our Father? Amen. Yes. <laughs> Who is your Father? God Almighty, right? That's right. <laughs> In heaven. Amen. Amen. The creator of heaven and earth. Psalms 86 and 15 says, But thou, O Lord, our God, full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thy handmaid. Our God is full of compassion, and he is mighty and strong. We don't serve a weak God. <laughs> He's mighty to save. Hallelujah. Sorry, we don't have words for you today. I'll try to feed you some words. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Here we go. Everyone needs compassion. That's right, man. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's, a love never, that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. 
Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness, the kindness of, the Savior. of the Savior. The hope of a nation. The hope of nations. Oh, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So take me as you find me, dear Lord. So take me as you find me. All my fears All and my failures. Fears and failure. Fill my life again. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow. I give my life to follow. Everything I believe Everything in. Everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Anybody surrender? Now I surrender. God is mighty My to God save. God is mighty to save. He is mighty to he save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. Forever, author of salvation. He rose and he conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. Yes, he did. He conquered Jesus the grave. Conquered the grave. Savior, Savior. He can move the, the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever you're author. Forever. Author of salvation. You rose and he conquered rose the grave. He rose and conquered the 
grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you have a Savior full of compassion and mercy? Hallelujah. Who's already conquered the grave for us. Hallelujah. 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 He went to Calvary for us. He died, he was buried, and rose from the dead, conquering the grave. Hallelujah. So we can shine our lights. Shine our lights and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory. Of the glory of the risen King. Of the risen King. Anybody have loved ones that they want to see the Lord save? Do you know that he's mighty and able to do it? He can do all things exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ever can ask or think. I dare you to put that loved one on the altar today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our God is great. How many of you know our God is great? Hallelujah. Why don't you just say it? Our God is great. Yes, our God is great. Make it personal. Say, my God is great. My God is great. Hallelujah. Splendor of a king. He's clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice, how great is our God, oh sing with me. How great is our God, all will see how great, how great, how great, how great is our God. Let's say it again, how great is our God, everybody, how great is our God. Sing with me, sing with me, how great is our God. All the earth will see, how great, how great is our God. And age to age, he stands. And time is in his hands. Yes. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. Yes. The Godhead three in one. Oh, it's the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. The Lord. God. How great is our God. Sing 
it together. How great is our God. Talking about your personal God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. He's the name above all. He's a great God. He's 
a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. You're great. hands and tell them you're a great God you're a great God nobody else like you a great God hallelujah you're a great God you are a great God you're a great God nobody can do us like he can he's a great God you're a great like he can. You're He's a great God. God. Nobody can save us like nobody, he can. Nobody. Uh. He's, He's a great God. God. Nobody can fill you like he can. Yeah. He'll fill every void in your life. He's you're a great God. God. Look up and tell him you're a great God. Yeah. You're, you're a great, great God. God. words to praise him hallelujah somebody might just say thank you jesus somebody might say oh how lovely you are how marvelous you are thank you father hallelujah use your words and let's praise him hallelujah lift those voices let's hear some praise in here let's act like we're at a ballpark hallelujah let your praises ring out come on come on come on come on you're cheering for your team Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're cheering for Team Jesus today. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Hallelujah. 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 How great is our God. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you. So uh, just right where you're sitting, we want to just pray God's blessing over you. Like uh, if you need God to touch you in any way, uh, we we're going to pray uh, during that, this, that second, first, second, third, whatever that song was. It, it just worked, didn't it? It, it just, couldn't, just could, couldn't interrupt it. But we're going to ask God to touch you right where you are, okay? We're going to pray. And like whatever that miracle is that you've been seeking God for, whatever the thing is that you need God to do for you, we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to touch you right where you are. Like this is not something special like, well, we got to lay hands on you. Uh, I told you guys my story about receiving a person of the Holy Spirit. I went to a men's conference and they all prayed for me. Nothing happened. I went home and got on my knees on the side of the bed and God showed up in my bedroom. So he's going to do that for you. Like whatever your need is. Whatever your need is, this is your moment, this is your season, this is your time. Like God's, God's presence is here. 
We're just going to invite him to help us like we can't do life by ourselves. So, Father, I bless these, your people. I thank you, God, that you are God that sees and knows every single need that we're experiencing, whether it's needs in our health or needs in our finances or in our occupations, our businesses. We pray, Father, that you would just bless our families and our children. And, God, you just cause our minds and our emotions to be heal right now. Like you wouldn't let the spirit of anxiety and stress and worry and fear and uh, depression and all those things that what the enemy would try to bring our way because of the conditions in our life not being what we think they should be. So I just pray God that you would just meet every single person right here, right now, and that you would just meet their needs because you are a great God. I, I give you honor from where we started to here at Life Church. I never imagined that we would come this far, like uh, so soon, like to even have people that could play worship songs live. And we give you thanks for that. You know, we started off with just videos that we played up here. So we give you glory and honor for what you're doing. And so we just ask God your choice blessings on each one of us as we go into this service to hear your word, that we'd experience you in a greater way. In Jesus' name, bless these your people. Amen and amen. High five somebody and have a seat. <clears throat> I hear them. I hear high fives all over. <clears throat> so if you didn't get a chance to get a copy of sermon notes, we've got some sermon notes available. Brother Saul, we still got sermon notes. There's one right up here in the front. Looks like everybody's covered. Hey, we want to continue on with this. We've been doing this, a series on the person of the Holy Spirit. We started off, we started off just understanding what the word Spirit and ghost mean like we see there's two different um, type uh, words that we get for the person of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. He's called the Holy Ghost and that's uh, Ruach is what that word means. In the New Testament, we get the word Holy, Holy Spirit and that's the, that's the word Numa. So we talked about those two different words and some of the things that kind of uh, gets us afraid sometimes we think about ghosts and spirit and not many of us like ghosts and not many of us like spirits, but we don't want to put the Holy Spirit over in that category. What we learned was those two different words have almost the same meaning. What well, that means breath. So but what we know is like the person of the Holy Spirit is just like breath to us. Like it's, it's like breath to our spiritual bodies. Like we, we all need our lungs to work. I, I, I watched a documentary on a pastor's healing uh, that that his lungs had collapsed or something like that. And they actually had to take that in order to get him revived, they have this new thing called echo something or another where they take the blood that's supposed to go through your lungs and get oxygenated and they run it through this machine and it puts, it puts oxygen in your blood then pumps it through your heart and then causes it to go to the rest, rest of your body. I was like so mesmerized by that. But he was on death's door and his, mom, his wife and his daughter, they, they just believed God that he was, he was going gonna, gonna to bring him back. You know, and God done it, right? But the point is the Holy Spirit is that breath to us. Like he's the oxygen in our spiritual blood that calls us to have the strength that we need to continue to go. So then last week we learned about this whole thing about Pentecost. We we all afraid of Pentecostal. I say, hey, listen, if you we going to a Pentecostal service, everybody be like, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to go to the Pentecostal service. I, I don't want to see people, you know, uh, falling out and all that kind of. We, we get a terrified and we hear the word Pentecostal. But hey, that word Pentecostal, we learned last week that it only it means 50. That, that's all that word means. But sometimes the Holy Spirit's been given a bad rap because of some of the experiences that we've seen. And today we're going to learn about the Holy Spirit. And the word we're going to focus on is the word charisma. Like what were you created for? Like charisma, like it, it's God's grace on you, like the thing that God created you to do is what we want to talk about. The, our theme this week uh, for this series is found here in Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it says, And it happened while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and, and he, he found finding some disciples. So he, he's traveled about a thousand miles or so, and he finds some disciples. And like these were disciples that were like disciples of John the Baptist. Like John the Baptist's whole group, that initial group that was with John the Baptist, they had gone about a thousand miles and they made disciples. And he asked them a question. He asked them this question. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? And this was their response. It says, they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Holy what? 
Hey, like, we don't know anything about the Holy Spirit. Nobody tells us all we know is about Jesus. But it, it says that they didn't necessarily know that there was a person of the Holy Spirit that even wanted to be a part of their life. And so uh, it is with us. Many of us are still in that same boat. There, there, there's a person of the Holy Spirit that, that wants to be a part of our life. So there's three gifts, three gifts of God that we want to focus on today. The gifts that we want to focus on, the first the gift that we want to talk about is simply the gift of eternal life. So eternal life is something like we don't have to work for, like we don't have to strive for. it. It's a gift like you don't. There's nothing that you can do to add to the blood of Jesus. Like there's no works that you can do. There's not enough hungry people that you can feed. There's not enough sick people in a hospital that you can go visit to earn the, the, the eternal life, to earn salvation. It's a gift. Everybody says it's a gift. So let's look what the word of God says in Romans 6, 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus. So, so that, that's some wages. That's wages. Like I, we, all, we all work and everybody's got some form of, of occupation. But when you go to, when you go to work, you, uh, you, you expect to re- receive wages. I remember my first job I had, they had a summer program for underprivileged kids. You know, like if, if, you, if, you was, if you're beneath the poverty level, then you can go work to school in the summer. And every, I would go work and I'd get every single one of my paychecks every two weeks or whatever it was, $200 I got. And I would put it in my wallet. By the end of the summer, baby, I had a wallet full of money and I lost it. I lost it. My coach found I, I, I found I found some money. Who whose money? Bobby, is this your money? It's my head football coach in high school. Is this your money? It's your wallet. Ain't I found it under bleachers over at you's working? You know? So, so I, 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 I lost the wages that I'd earned. But this word is speaking to us about there are wages that are associated with sin. There are wages that if we don't accept this free gift of eternal life, then we're left to foot the bill. We're left to try to make the payment any way necessary. And then God's, God's ultimate, the ultimate condemnation for anyone that doesn't accept the free gift. I've always been mesmerized by God and how simple, simple he made the gift. Like he said, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. What? Are you just going to say words like, Jesus, I want to invite you into my life. And he comes back easily. Like, I, I've been always mesmerized by that. But God says, this is the gift that we have, eternal life, in a person called Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's not in any other name that we can find it. It's not in how hard we work. It could be. He could have said that if that's what he meant. It could be in how hard we work, how much we give, how many people we visit. How we, it could have been in all that stuff. But he says, no, 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 no. This gift is eternal life, and it's only coming through a name. And what's the name? It's the name of Jesus. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you've been, you've been saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we are saved. We're saved and we receive eternal life, but it's a gift. I mean, any, we, can, we all love gifts. We all love gifts. So part of the gift is like you, you got the packaging. You got it. It's all wrapped up. I mean, we all like that, don't we? So all of us, we, my girls, they were always, they get under the Christmas tree, Dana, and they shake the boxes. You know what I'm saying? They do the whole shake technique. And they, each one of them find it. And then by Christmas morning, they'd all have their stuff separated you know, into their piles. <laughs> and they get which one are they going to open first, the big one or the low one? The big one first, baby. They got to open the big one. But it's a gift. Like, it's wrapped up. God's packaged it for us, and he packaged it in his son. And all, all we have to do is just accept the gift. He's handing us the gift. We embrace the gift. We receive the gift. And the gift is ours to be had. The next thing, that the next gift that we have is the gift of the person of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the person of of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 in the New Living, Test, New Living Translation, it says, once when he, he, was, he has, was eating with them, he says he commanded them, said, don't leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift that he's promised, as I told you before. So this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. He said, I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to wait for the gift. The person of the Holy Spirit was a gift that he was referencing. It says, for John truly baptized you with water, but you shall shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So there's two different instances of baptism being used. One is water baptism. Many times we receive the water baptism. It's it's normally closely tied to when we first ask Jesus to come in our heart. We receive water baptism. Did I do that? Sorry. Uh, We receive water baptism. Okay. And then this next baptism that he gives us, he gives us the gift, he gives us the baptism of the person of 
the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the third gift, the third gift that God gives us, which is what we're going to focus on today, is the concept of spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are gifts that have been given to us. In, in 1 Corinthians 12, 1, it says this. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So there are 27 different spiritual gifts mentioned in, in, uh, in throughout the scriptures. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, and all down through there, we see the primary spiritual gifts list, listed. So that's a gift of prophecy, a gift of healing, a gift of, 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 of like discernment, uh, discerning of tongues, speaking of tongues is one of the gifts that everybody's terrified of, but it's a gift. Like it's, it's a gift of word of wisdom or word of knowledge, like God to show you something that's getting ready to happen in somebody's life. All those are gifts that God gives us. And he says, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning them. But he says, this is, I want, this is what I want you to do. It says a spiritual gift is given to each one of us so that we can help each other. A spiritual gift is given to each one of us so that we can help each other. You know, I, I uh, my first, first, I don't know, 20 something years of being Christian, I was, I, I went to church, <laughs> you know, until I was about 18. But when I was 18 at Missouri State, I got saved for real. I mean, I partied like I, all the best freshmen in America do except Bryce. Bryce done the right thing. Thank you, Bryce. There you go, Bryce. Give Bryce a hand. Bryce said, Bryce said, Bryce done the right thing. But not this college football player, baby. I was at every, I, not three-fourths of them. I was at three-fourths of all the parties. And, and I got saved for real. And this is what caused me to get saved. One of my teammates was driving during Christmas holiday uh, to Oklahoma. And he, he went out across Oklahoma in an icy spot in January. And he hit a slick spot down by Yukon, Oklahoma, in a little uh, uh, a Suzuzu, a Suzu truck, them little bitty trucks they had back in the day, flipped over, ejected him, truck rolled on him, and killed him. And I, my life changed like that. Say, like, God, look, I've been playing around. You know, I haven't been serious about this thing. If I would have been in there with my best friend, my life would have ended. I don't know where I would have spent eternity. Would you come into my life? And I remember going in room, Hammond's room 802B and getting on my knees on the side of my bed, and everything changed for me in that moment that the spiritual gift is given to each one of us to help each other. And that's when my life uh, began of, of growing in the spirit and understanding the things of the spirit. So of all the spiritual gifts that we could receive, let's say that's 12 gifts and that's uh, 40 of us in this room. Like, let's say each one of us had a gift. So what God wants us to do is understand, discover the gifts that he's given us. Says so the spiritual gift is a special, is my best definition of it. A, the, a spiritual gift is a special gift supernatural ability that God gives each of us his children so that together we can advance his purposes in the world. So it's not a natural ability. It's not something that we can do on our own. It's not our, our, our gifts, our, our you know, natural aptitudes and all those types of things. It's, it's not that. It's not something like, you know, I, I, the, he, he got the gift of joy. Joy is a fruit. It's, it's not a gift. I mean, you, you can't, it's not, it's not something that you can do naturally well. Like, it's, it's spiritual gifts, not how strong I am. Spiritual gift can't be how handsome and good looking I am. <laughs> that ain't a spiritual gift. It's not a spiritual gift, but it's a supernatural ability. So what God wants us to do, there's three things that God wants us to do. The first thing he wants us to do is he wants us to discover, discover the gifts that God has for me. Discover them. Like we do, we do something called Growth Tracks here. Growth Track 101 is about Life Church and how, how we connect it with the capital C Church of Jesus. You got to know that before you join any church. To, to, number two, the second growth track we do is like how to grow as a Christian, how to study, how to pray, how to grow as a Christian. And then the third growth track is your personality and your spiritual gifts. We actually take you through two assessments, 120 question assessment and 172 question assessment on one your personality is 20 questions, 72 questions is your spiritual gifts. Like what did God create you for and how do you discover? And, we, and through those questions, you discover what your spiritual gifts are. And for me, it happened probably about five years ago that I went through this whole growth track 301 
and I was asked to teach it at another church, and I just went through the whole thing. When men and pastor handed me that, man, I went through the whole thing. I took Marcia, I took my girls to it. I added me and Marcia's score together. I seen which areas we were strongest at as a couple, which areas we were, we were, we weren't, uh, we were furthest apart on. We were intentional about folks and changing our relationship. I was real strong in leadership. Marcia was real poor in leadership. So she didn't have much experience in that, and I had a lot of experience. So we said, how can we develop you in leadership? And she started volunteering for different ministries, you know, doing different things like that. So she can grow in that area. And as we grew, grew together and grew closer and, and we understood our gifts and where we were strong and weakest as a couple, then everything began to grow for us as a marriage. So God, God wants us to discover our gifts. And this is where he says it. Romans 12, 6 says, having then gifts differing according to the grace which God has given us. So like the gifts, of, of God chooses the gift. Sometimes in our lives, we, we, we choose the gifts that we want, right? We already know what we got in the box. You know, I, I, I chose a gift. It was my birthday, and somebody in this room said, hey, 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 what do you, what do you want for your birthday? I said, man, you got some good cologne that you wear. What is that called? Give me some of that for my birthday. I want, that's some good smelling stuff. Will you buy some? And Brother Saul went to Walmart, went to Walmart and bought me some of it for my birthday, but I chose the gift. But this is a grace gift. Like God chooses which grace he wants to release in each one, each which gift he wants to release in each one of our lives. Like it's, it's not something that we earn or deserve. It's, it's God's unmerited favor and God releases the gift that he wants uh, in our lives. Here's King David, how King David talked about this. Like how God putting the gifts inside of you. He says this, he says, for you form me in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. So King David says in my innermost being. Like you formed me. He, he had a revelation, like everything that he's seen in his life right now, that God had done that a long time ago. And let's see what the next verse says. It says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. So David, you know, David's probably looking in the mirror, writing this stuff down. He, 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 probably, he probably didn't have the six pack that he had when he was 20 something, but he was looking in the mirror at himself. So, hey, baby, I, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, us men, we look in the mirror, we think like that. Women, y'all look in the mirror, y'all find something wrong every time, baby. But King David, he, he, he said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. For my soul knows very well. Some of us, the problem is, is we can't say that about ourselves. We don't know who we are. We don't know what God's created. We don't know all those things that God's placed in our inner parts. We haven't sought it out. We haven't attempted to discover who God's created us to be. And that's what we want to do. It's kind of walk you through the process on how do you discover who you are. And so that you can say, my soul knows very well. You know, the thing that God told me. So listen, I want you to be accessible. Everybody say accessible. Hey, I had, I had the gift, but nobody had access to them. Nobody but me. Like, I, I, I go to work. This is my little world. Don't watch a little football on Monday nights. And, no, and you know, I, got, I had my whole system worked out. Wasn't accessible. God said, you got to be accessible. You, gotta, you have to give people access to the things that I placed in you. There are gifts inside of you that you need to release. But if you don't allow people into your world, you don't open up your time, you don't free up your time to let people come experience you, then that's nothing that's going to change for anybody else. The only thing changing is you. And you're not going to be going to. So he, he, he taught me that. And I began to open myself up and do some things that I, I didn't normally do. So here's, here's the last verse. It says, uh, first, uh, Psalms 139, verse 16. It says, your eyes saw my substance. It says, but being, and being ununiform and in your book, they all were written. The days were fashioned for me when as yet they were none of them. And I love this. It says, my substance, my substance was written in your book. Could it be that the God of the universe has written a book about you? Yeah, I told you the first, I, I added some chapters to God's book when I showed up on the campus of Missouri State in 1989, baby. He, he has to, I added something to my book that he didn't have for me. He didn't have no parties in, in his book for my life. I put those pages in my book. And some of you, we've written some pages in our book. <laughs> we've added some chapters and we added some verses that, now God didn't intend to be in our book. But I love it. Says, it says, the days God has fashioned. I love it. It's like this sweater, you know, it sort of kind of fits. I need to add a little bit right in here, you know, so everything can hang and won't be so. But, it, but he says he's fashioned our days. Like, I love that because we, we've all, like, had stuff that was too long or didn't fit in the ways and you had to have it altered so it could fit you right. God's done that with your days. 
Like he's made your days fit who you are. He's made, he's purposed your days so that you can, your day is going to fit your strength and your abilities and your, your, all your competency so you can make great things happen. God has fashioned your days. And, and that's what King David's saying about us. Like that's what God's done. He's created our days. He's fashioned them so they fit. So God's design in me helps to reveal God's destiny for me. God's design in me reveals God's destiny for me. So what did God create me to do? Like he's designed you for something. He, he, he's designed you to, for a specific thing to help you reveal, understand what the destiny is, the calling is that, that he has for you. The second thing that God says that, that we need to do is we have to develop the gifts that God has given us. Develop the gifts God has given us. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says this. It says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. I love this desire spiritual gifts. So what, what this is really saying to us is the Holy Spirit is not someone that's repulsive. The Holy Spirit is not, if God desires for us to have, receive the person of the Holy Spirit, we shouldn't push that away. It's like the Holy Spirit is here, and I love this, but he's, he's the CEO of everything supernatural here on earth. We have the enemy, the devil, and all his angels that are structure. The schemes, that Ephesians 6 tells us what they're about. He said there's principalities, there's powers, there's rulers, there's a spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And he says, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may withstand the wiles, the schemes, the strategy that the enemy's bringing at you. And he says, you got to have the helmet of salvation, a breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, having your feet shod with the preparations of God's gospel. And he says, praying always. He says, the, the Holy Spirit is like, when the, when the enemy's coming at you with everything he's got, he, you, got to, you got to have something to whack him with, baby. And that's what the Holy Spirit is here to help us do. He's here to help us be victorious over everything that's coming against us. I like to use it in this terminology. The Bible talks about principalities and powers, but I'm, I'm talking about presidents and, and, and vice presidents and governors and may, uh, city, uh, county commissioners and city mayors. And, you know, the devil is very structured. It, like the things that are happening in your life, he's he been working on your family with some of them same things for the last 2,000 years, baby. So that's how he's getting it to work. So we got to have to have, have to have the person of the Holy Spirit to help us. And the Bible says we've got to desire spiritual gifts. Desire them. And he'll, he'll give them to us. Second, second, second Timothy 1, 6 says this. This is why he says, I remind you to fan the flames of the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid hands on you. He said, fan the flame. Fan the flames. I, 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 how many of y'all had a close encounter with flames in your life that, that left you wounded? Anybody had a close encounter with flames? Anybody in the room? Hey, I, maybe I'm the only, that's one back there. Hey, maybe I'm the only one. But it probably about 10 years ago, 10 years ago or so, well, our girls, we, we had a birthday party. You know, we, we done a cookout out in the park, you know. And uh, we, went to, we went to all this, and we got some of them 80-20 hamburgers. But these was actually 2080s. <laughs> you know, 2080s. And I laid them suckers out. I laid them, you know, those, those uh, at the park, they just have like the bars going across. There's no lid or nothing. You take the brush, you, you, you put the coals in there, you scratch them off, and you just lay whatever's right on top of them, right on top of those bars that are going across there. And do you know, I got to flipping those 2080 hamburgers over, <laughs> and that, those flames from that, flames from the burgers. I was trying to keep from burning them because we were having a birthday party in the park and all the friends were, and I was trying to, it was a, you know, it's a battle when it's trying to get, Stephen knows what I'm talking about, baby. You got to, you got to win the battle. And I wasn't thinking like bring something to squirt it with or anything like that. And, and, and the flames like came up the, the spatula deal and like kiss the top of my knuckles. And then, you know, all birthday, Marcia said she just entered the room. All birthday fun in a, when the flames came in contact with my knuckles. I mean, I thought my world was in it. Anybody ever been burned like that? Like, you don't want anything touching. The best thing that I could do was keep those fingers in a cup of ice till the, till the party was over. And then I kept them in a cold cloth and, and kept them wrapped up. In about a day, I healed up from that. But just said, listen, there's a, there's a flame of the Holy Spirit inside of you that needs to be flamed. That needs to be fanned. 
It needs to be fanned. Like there's something inside. God's placed that gift inside of you. And, and you, you, got to, you got to allow the wind. You got to let oxygen get into it so it can, it can flame up. In my case, some 2080 hamburgers that I was cooking, the grease off them was, <laughs> that was all that they needed. That's the, the coals needed to come up and, and burn my fingertips. But God said, I want you to fan the flame. The fan, fan the, flames. the next thing he says he wants you to do is I, I, I want you to use the gifts that God's given you. Use the gifts. Use the gifts. I mean, there's, there's a, a song that, <laughs> that, that I'm going to ask Sister Julie to come up and help me with. But it, it was a song about 20 years ago. Uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I, I, this is my first and last debut of exercising this, this, this gift that wasn't a gift for me. You know, I took the assessment uh, that, that I'm telling y'all about, the 72 questions. And I thought for sure that worship would be like at the top of like all the spiritual gifts. There's nothing I enjoy more than like worship. I love it. I mean, I, I really enjoy it. But it says, and one of the questions I asked, uh, you spend um, a great deal of time developing your vocal or instrumental gift. I was like, no, I don't do that. But baby, I sang in the shower. Don't that count for something? You know, but it don't. I mean, like I don't spend hours trying to develop my, my gift. I just sing along. I'm a sing along man. And 20 years ago, the choir director said, Brother God, when we, Brother Deacon God, when we going to ask you to, we going to ask you to lead a song. We going we gonna to have to lead a song. Sister Nora England, if you're watching, I forgive you. <laughs> but I got up in front of everybody, in front of, the, in front of everybody to lead the song. And what did I say the song was? My soul's been anchored. So I, I pick up the words to the song. Come on up, Sister Julie. I pick up the words to the song, and, and, I, and, I, and I start singing the song, and I, I'm, bro, I'm shaking the shit. The storms keep raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. And then I had the nerves to say this, this is Jody. I think I better say it again. I went there. When the storms keep on raging in my life. I was terrified, Darla. Terrified in front of the old church. But sister, but that was then. Now I'm not, I, I, I know it's my, my gift now, but at least I know how the song goes. Sister Julie, will you just give us a taste of how that's really supposed to sound? Because this is her gift that she's using her gift. Let's hear it. Though the storm keep on raging in my life. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. <laughs> The hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know He'll lead me to that place He has prepared. Sing that song 15 minutes from now. She's gonna take us to a whole nother level because that's her gift. That's her gift. Now, Sister Julie, I could probably sing a little bit of it, but it still yes, ain't my can. gift. <laughs> it still ain't my gift. I'm better than I was 20 years ago, baby. But you got to use the gift. Use the gift. So that's what the Bible says. It says, 
as in 1 Peter 4, 10, thank you so much, Sister Julie. Amen. As each one of us receives the gift, he says, minister it to the other one, one another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. He wants us to minister to one another as a good, good, good uh, steward of the manifold grace of God. It says, for God has given each one of us a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts use them well and serve one another. And I, I love the fact that the first time I ever was exposed to the spiritual gifts in operation, it was a lady by the name of Lottie Osborne, and she was, she was ministering out in Kansas, and I walked in the room, and she was a very prophetic person. I mean, you know, she pointed somebody, say, sister, right back here in a, in a, in a, a flowery top, this is what God is saying, that you've been going through a problem with your back. If you choke, come on up here, God's going to heal you. You've been having an issue with your, your right hip. And matter of fact, your son, he just got, you know, she's going through all that stuff. And I said, God, whatever it is that she's got, I, I want to receive that. And this is what God done for me. This lady, who knows this lady on the left-hand side? Anybody recognize that face? It says that we're only one or two people away from anybody in the world. Like somebody in this room should know who that is. But this person was a person that I worked with about three or four years ago. And I got up, God woke me up at 4.30 or 3 o'clock or whatever the time is. He normally wakes me up to pray. Normally it's around 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm up and I'm wide awake. And I, I wake up and, I tell, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I say, I'm seeing this lady's face. And God has me praying and praying and praying for this lady. So I come to work that morning and I, and I tell her, her name, is, her name is Jennifer. I come to work and I tell her, hey, Jennifer, I don't know what's going on in your world. He says, but the God of the universe had me praying for you this morning at three o'clock in the morning. And I look over at her and she's got big crocodile tears running down her face and meeting underneath her chin. I said, so I don't know what it is. But the God of the universe, he knows about it, and it's going to be okay. You know, and she said, well, this morning I took a pregnancy test, and I don't know how my husband's going to take it, and I don't know if he's going to want to keep the baby. And I, I didn't go there with her. I said, hey, the God of the universe knows, and he told he had me praying for you this morning, and it's going to be all right. You go tell him. The next day she comes and she's all excited. Hey, I went home and I told my husband that, that, uh, that, that I was pregnant. And he's so excited. Look at him. There he is. See him down there? The little guy. Using the gift. Now, if I'd have been terrified to use the gift, oh, no, that was just me thinking that. That's that little gift right down here in the left-hand corner. Three years old now. But if I would have been afraid to use the gift, you know, who knows what, what would have happened. But this is what God wants us to do. At Life Church, we exist to take us on a spiritual relationship journey. A spiritual relationship journey. The first thing God wants us to do in our spiritual relationship journey is to know him. We have to know God. We have to know God. And that's us just saying, God, I, I believe in you. You know, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Holy Spirit, I want you to be a part of my life. The next thing God wants us to do is to find freedom. So here at Life Church, what we do in finding freedom, we just get you connected with a support system called small groups. Like people that can help you grow, help you develop, help you through the challenges that you face. Folks that can pray with you, help you in developing um, a stronger more, a relationship with God. The next thing we do here is, is this, we want you to do is discover your purpose. Discover your purpose. And we're in here we call, we call that uh, growth tracks. So we want every one of you to go through and discover like your, your, your personality, your spiritual gifts and who God created you to do. And the final thing that we want to have happen in your life is we want you to make a difference. Everybody say make a difference. So God has created you to, to make a difference. And this is what that looks like. So we, we, here, we, we want you to know God. And that's relationship with Father God, relationship with the Lord Jesus, coming through the waters of baptism, relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. And each one of us, we're in a different place. You know, if we went down that list, we put yes or no, you know, where would you be? You know, yes, yes, I've, I've said, God, I believe in you. Yes, I've invited Jesus into my heart. Yes, I've, I've completed water baptism. Yes, I've got a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I've joined a small group. Yes, I've completed living in freedom every day, which is how do you take off the shame, rejection, fear, and depression, heaven? Yes, I've completed growth tracks. Yes, I, I, I joined the dream team. This is where we get into making a difference. Yes, I joined the church. Yes, I became a small group leader. Yes, I became a ministry leader. Yes, I, I became, a, became a campus pastor. And yeah, yes, I, I want to become, a, I wanna become a, a senior pastor. And some of y'all going to move beyond that and you're going to become a church planner. 
<laughs> you don't plant churches around the world. But this is a process that God wants us to work, walk out. And for each one of us, we're just in a different place. We just have to learn to move to the next step. There's no condemnation. You know, I told you guys five years ago, I was at, in that not accessible. I'd done them first two or three things on the top of the list. But all the rest of that, I, baby, it wasn't, I wasn't doing anything else for anybody else. And that's, what, that's not God, what God wants for us. He wants us to be accessible. And I want you to know this. Leave with this statement. Is that you were made for this. You were made for this. Like whatever God has placed in your heart to do, he's equipped you. He's already written it in your days. You were made for this. Like he's got incredible and awesome things in store for you. Let us stand and we'll pray. So precious Holy Spirit, I, I, I thank you so much for these, your people that have listened so atten attentively to your words. And I pray, God, that you would speak to each one of their hearts about the place that they're, they're in, that they would be ready to take the next step, like whatever that is for them, like they've accepted you, Lord Jesus, they believe in you, Father God, and if they need to be baptized, I pray that you would, you would just cause them to know that if they need to come into relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit, that you would just cause them to know exactly where they are in this journey, this spiritual relationship journey that you're taking them on. And so this opportunity right now it's to give everybody in this room that, that hasn't taken a first step, like you know you believe in God, but you never really invited Jesus into your heart, never said, Jesus, I want to be in relationship with you. We want to do that right now. We want to ask you to please examine your life and say yes to Jesus. So if that's you, that you, you know, like, hey, I need to invite Jesus into my life, I don't want you to do just what I've done in room 802B at Hammond's Student Center in 1990, around January the 13th or 14th, somewhere around the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend, I got on my knees and I asked you, Holy Spirit, to come into my life. I asked you, Jesus, to come into my life and to forgive me of my sins. And I chose to live for you. And from that day to this one, you have kept my life safe. And I thank you for doing that. And I'm praying that you would do that very thing for these individuals in the room. So if you're here and you've never accepted Jesus, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to raise your hand as we start your journey today. I want you just to start your journey today. Like you've never done that. Like you never said, Jesus, I'm saying yes to you. I'm saying yes to you. Okay. All right. So Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for these that are here. And we ask you, we ask you, Holy Spirit, just to reveal yourself to each one. Like we all need to take that next step in growing and developing our relationship with you. Would you please come into each one of our lives and just manifest yourself and make yourself known and make yourself real to us in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Brother Saul, would you come on up? Okay, we got uh on on uh this is happening on November 4th. A couple quick announcements. We've got uh Super Saturday happening. And what Super Saturday is all about? It's about us uh, taking each one of us through growth tracks. We'll start to, at nine o'clock. We should be wrapped up by noon and we'll serve breakfast. But it's to get every single one of us through growth tracks. And so anybody that hadn't completed growth tracks, we're inviting you to come out and be a part of that. There's still room in small groups. So if you're, you're interested in uh, connecting, be a part of, becoming a part of small groups, we'd love for you to come up and uh, c get connected uh, with small groups and generation student ministries, women's small groups, living in freedom, couple small groups are still happening. Uh, we've got generation student ministries that are ha that's still happening in Marshall. So we got a little bit, uh, we've got Thursdays at 6.30 that's happening in Marshall, it's a normal time. And then we, we kind of created, we're doing, we're doing a whole invite series for them too. So they've got, they've got a video competition that they're doing. Like the, we're going to see who can make the best, best, best videos to promote Generation Student Ministries, invite people using all this information right here, inviting them using their cell phones to create a really awesome video. And we got some cold, hard cash we're going to give away to the winner. We're gonna, I mean, that's, that's $50, baby. That'll keep you. That'll, you can be able to pay all your college with all that big money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, and so we got the deadline of next next Sunday. So I get make sure you get your videos in, uh, 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 Br Brother Saul, and he'll he'll get you get you going on that. Hey, we had Design for Life Women's Conference. Where are the ladies at that went to that? Hey, who who's gonna be a brave soul and come up here and give us some give us some up to something that you loved about it? Anybody? Come on up, come on up. Christine is gonna be the resident spokesperson. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Get on this side. All right, so was it awesome, ladies? 
it, well, everybody's tired this morning. I don't think anybody has slept all weekend. Um, but we just had a great time, and I just love what Bobby talked about because that's exactly what we talked about was the next step in your life and brick by brick how God builds us into the women that he called us to be. And I just believe that once you know your identity in Christ and who God calls you to be, you can live to the fullest potential of who you are. And we saw that this weekend. We saw people get recommitted to Christ. And we saw chains being broken. And it was just a great time. And we really have a goal next year. We want to get a ton of women there. So I want to see hands up. Who's going next year? You can, you can, there's no work excuse. You can take off a year in advance. We'll get you the dates. But we want to have 30 um, women there with us. We had 10 this time, but I want to share something with you just real quick about small beginnings. And so James River Church, which is in Springfield, actually Bobby and Marcia's daughters go there, and it started with just six people. And the six people were mainly just family. Um, and this has exploded like three campuses, and you know, there's 10,400 women at this conference. And women, you were just kind of a special breed. We just need each other. We need that time together. Um, we laughed. We cried. We did it all. We worshiped. It was a blast. And I just, I thank God for it. All glory to him. Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. So, so before you go, Christina, stay up here, Christina. Everybody extend your hands towards Christina because we're we going to ask God's blessing on her. Here, right here at Life Church, the first First, sometime in February. I want it to be the first Friday and Saturday in February. We want to do our own women's conference. And everything that you guys loved and how Jesus made you feel, we're going to come right here to Saline County and we're going to reproduce it right here and be a blessing to the women right here in this region. February 2018, not 19. So right around the corner. We're going to give y'all 90 days. Hey, y'all still going to have your feet warm from that experience as you, you release that same gift here. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you uh, for Sister Christina, and we thank you for the ladies that went with her, that every single one of them are going to send Christina like how her, their experiences on how Jesus made them feel, and we're going to reproduce what you've done there, Lord Jesus, right here in this county for the women that are here. And that conference is going to be called Be Loved Conference. Be, be, be loved, like you, that, that the women can come and experience the love of Jesus right here at Life Church. So we release your choice blessings on them, that same anointing that they experience there, that you would cause them to release that here in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Brother Saul, you want to come on up? Hey, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good? Uh, Yuli wants to share something with you guys. No? I just thought, no, she wanted to come up here with me, so I let her come up here. But we're going to talk about, uh, got the clicker. All right. We're talking about, uh, about Jesus feeding the 5,000, right? The two fish and five loaves, all right? So, so here it goes. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is deserted. This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. So here you got the disciples telling Jesus, send them away. You know, we don't want, to, we don't want the job of feeding these, these people. There's too many. All right, so how many of us in here have that kind of mindset right now where God, don't send more people to Life Church. Man, that's, that's work involved. You know, that entitles more stuff, more commitment, more people stepping up and finding out their gifts and their, and their talents and their purpose. Right, so... So we'll go to the next one here, and it says, But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. All right, so this, this is Life Church right now, a baby church, a year and some change. All right, so this is uh, when we first started Life Church, I've been a part of it. I've been blessed to be a part of it from the beginning. And there was a, a total of unchurched people out there. We weren't going for people that were going to church already, we were targeting the people that were unchurched and they didn't have a church home. I don't remember the total, it was like 8,000, 6,000. Something like that. So, here we are, a year later. So there's still those people out there that need, need Jesus. So here we are. How many of us are committing? You know, my brother Bobby is pushing the growth tracks, not because it's, he's promoting it, but he knows the importance of it. You know, to be the same mindset, same accord, to do God's will, you know, to discover our calling and our purpose and our gifts and all that stuff. All right, so, so we'll go to the next one here. So, out of uh, I told disciples wanted to get rid of uh, all these people and send them to be somebody else's problem. Jesus said, you do this. You feed them. So here you have a, a brave young lad here. 
So it says, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves, two small fish, but what are they among so many? I mean, this is an awesome verse right here because we're in an awesome season we're entering, entering to. You guys might not know this, but we have a, a gentleman here that uh, has been a church planner. And at that time, he probably, he probably thought he was giving his two fish and five loaves to God. But that wasn't the case, because now the church planner is becoming a pastor now. Huh? So now I believe he's really giving his two fish and five loaves. And even then, I see how God's hand on him. But what does that mean? Life church, you know, it's a vision God laid on, his, on him. All right, so, so where are we at? Are we those disciples that are going to sit back and uh, try to send other people away somewhere else? Or are we going to be those disciples that are going to step up and uh, go through the growth tracks, find out our true calling and purpose of what God has created us to be, to, to not for the four walls of this church, but to transcend these four walls and impact Slater, impact Marshall, Saline County, and just uh, do like that ripple effect. You know, when you throw that rock in the pond and it just loop, 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 you know, that's what we're here for. Right? But we have this awesome man right here that has given his two fish and five loaves. I feel that now he has given his two fish and five loaves. So God has been on him now, but I just, I just see little loose ends being tied up. And that's what we've been needing in Life Church. And now we're, we're ready to embark in a different season as Life Church. Uh, God starts uh, blessing us more than he already has. Man, you guys look at Life Church, you see all this stuff up. Man, I was here, there was like three pews right here. And this was covered up in like a little bench and, and a, little, a little stand right there for the projector, a little screen right here. I mean, that's, that's how I see Life Church in the beginning. So now you see a live worship band. I mean, you tell me if God's hand is not with us, if God is not with us. All right, so that's pretty awesome of what God is doing. But here we, here, here we go. Then he took the five loaves, the two fish, looking up to heaven. He blessed it, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. All right, so here's Jesus. Jesus can do anything he wants, how he wants it. But you know what? He chooses to be in relationship with us. He chooses us to come together with him to do the work that he's wanting to do here on earth. So he's choosing to partner up with us. It's not, it's not him partnering up with him. It's him wanting and desiring to partner up with us. So that's his desire. Yeah, that the more people, that nobody... Uh, that all, everybody comes to repentance and that everybody's saved. All right? But he wishes that nobody shall perish. So, so here we go. This is a, so they all ate, they were filled, and 12 baskets of leftover fragments were taken upon, up upon by them. So we went from having no food at all to having one brave guy say, this is what I got. He gave everything. So how many of us are, are, are at a point of giving our two fish and five loaves? How many of us think we're giving our two fish and five loaves, but in reality, we're still holding something back? I mean, this is our own personal question for, for you guys as individuals. Um, but I'll share this with you guys. When I first got saved six years ago, seven years ago, I took, I took the, the group, uh, the, the gifts assessment, you know. But what I got out of it was uh, hospitality and service, right? The first time I took it. But why? Because I, did, I was new to the scriptures. I was new to prayer. I was new to everything that it involved to be a Christian. So here I come to Life Church last year sometime, and Bobby's uh, offering these girls tracks. So I take that, that assessment again, and here I am, it gives me the gifts of prophecy. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. Why? Because I was taught that that wasn't really a gift for right here, right now, as a church I was. So what Bobby talked about earlier about uh, you've got to exercise your gifts and practice it. All right, so, so when that happened, he started sending me links and studies and, and everything to do with prophecy. So I've been able to experience prophecy, you know, in, in my, own, my own walk. So it's not for me to be, look at me, look at me, I'm better than you guys. No, it's for me to give it as a gift for you guys. Because every gift that you guys have, that maybe you haven't discovered yet, is not for you. It's for the church and the edification of the church. Salvation, that's for you as individuals, but your gifts, they're meant to give away. We can't keep them. We've got to give them away to edify the church and grow it. All right, so, so I, that's what I want to share a little bit. A, little, a while ago, God laid on my heart to lead the youth and have something for them. Uh, you guys might not know this, but prior to being a Christian, man, I didn't want nobody at my house because of my lifestyle. I didn't like just random people showing up. So my house was really... 
like off limits to just a certain few that I would allow to go. So why do I say this? Because when God laid on my heart to open up his house to lead this youth, I mean, that, that was something major for me, all right? Because uh, I I mean, back then, I, I wasn't, it wouldn't even dawn on me to do it. But I'm to the realis- realization now that it's not my house, it's his house, and all I want to do is glorify him through it. So what am I saying? This has been an awesome ministry that he's blessed us with. it has been an awesome kids that have been a part of this ministry. But long story short, you know, we had a, a, a full house, and uh, we had no room. That's an awesome problem to have, right? But I, I, I sat with those kids, and I said, here you go. You, you know, you want to talk about prophecy? This is a prophecy for you guys. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where. But God's going to bless us with a building to go to. We don't have room here. And we left out of that. But what happens? A week later, he works in the hearts of a family here and opens up their business and their shop so we can move the, the study there and have way more access to bring more kids. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that how God works? Right? So that's my gift, guys. Now I got to work. I got to practice it. I got to develop it. I got to ask God to show me and guide me more into it. But everybody here, guys, everybody here has a specific calling, a specific purpose, of a specific gift that God has laid on your hearts. But this is the whole point of uh, engaging the, the, the growth tracks to uh, find that out for, uh, you know, have God reveal those things to us. All right, so, uh, I mean, you can get, never get old about God, Bobby pushing them and pushing them and pushing them because they're really essential to our Christian walk. So that's what I want to share with you guys here in a nutshell. But, uh, you know, we could talk about money, tithing, talents, you know, but that's what it's all about. You know, we give our tithes. We've got to go above and beyond that. You know, we've got to give offerings. We've got to do alms. We've got to do good deeds. You know, we've got to go uh, above and beyond of what, you know, the tithes already belong to God. Everything belongs to God, but the tithes already His, right? So what are we doing to go above and beyond of what the least we could do because of what He's done for us, right? So, uh, like I said, your talents, your gifts, Man, don't keep them for yourselves. When you discover what your gift is and your calling is, man, develop them in a way through the Holy Spirit that you can give it away to whoever you encounter. Amen? Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. All right, with that, with that being said, uh, if, you, if you brought your tithes and offerings today, uh, we'd like for you to prepare that right now. We want to bless it. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got um, Growth Track 301 that we'll be doing today immediately following service, and we'll be praying for our, our missions team. So if, if you're here uh, and you're part of the missions team, would you just come right up here and stand with me? Um, we're going we're gonna to get uh, some folks around you to pray. We're going to pray for the offering. We're going to dismiss everybody uh, to, to, to leave. Uh, and we, we will pray for this group of individuals that are going on a missions trip. And as you leave, as you leave, we want to make sure that you don't forget to grab right at the front door. We've got our invite connection points this week. Uh, we've got one of these cards that says, this card could change your life. On the back, it's some real small print, but it's amazing that we want to invite people to come be a part. And we want you to take one of, you recognize that lady? This is going to scare everybody. <laughs> this, is going, this is a warm, friendly, loving face, and we've got some postcards developed. We want you to invite somebody. God will reveal to you who those two or three people are that you need to invite, and uh, he'll make that happen. So we're going to bless our offering, and then we're going to ask that those of you who can come pray with us. We're going to pray for this, pray for this missions team. They're going to Nicaragua, and it's going to be a tremendous blessing. We've got the folks that are actually... Uh, leading the whole ministry of Nicaragua that's going to be our like our guests 20 something churches that they have that they've started there and they're going to be our actually chaperones to walk us through and kind of give us an overview of what they do and how their ministry works and how we can be in partnership with them like $150 from us will help a church function in Nicaragua that's not a lot of money and we can make that happen as a church so this group is going to be heading down to Nicaragua we'd love to have you come up and pray with us as we pray over them uh, and bring your, bring your tithes and offerings forward as we do that. Let's stand together and we'll dismiss. So, Father, it's in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you so much for these that are here today. We thank you, God, for the group that you're sending in Nicaragua. We ask, God, your choice blessings over the tithes and offerings that uh, we're receiving today. We thank you, Father, that you've been so faithful to Life Church to be able to provide everything that we need, uh, including this building that you've blessed us with and 
and how you've done that for us to be a debt-free church. And we thank you, God, that you're causing every single need to be met, providing for this group to go to Nicaragua. Nicaragua. I pray, God, your choice blessings on these people in this room that just last week they gave $4,414 to help to bless the churches in Nicaragua. So we just give you thanks. Let's give God a big hand for that. Thank you so much for doing that, God. And uh, so, Father, we are truly, truly in awe of you and your generosity, your choice blessings on every person that made that possible. And I just thank you, God, that you're going to use those funds to go down and make a difference in these families that are starving, literally starving. Like they just had Hurricane Nate or whatever, Tropical Storm Nate blow through there and flood things out and the people are just in need. And we don't think about it that way, but God, you're gonna use us to go make a difference in their world. And we, we are honored to do that. And so it's in Jesus' mighty name, I bless these your people. I pray that you give them an awesome and a super amazing week this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you, have a great week.